Hello and welcome to session three in our Lent course this year. The title is, You Were Created to Become Like Christ. Now this deserves a slight recap on actually session one, when we reminded ourselves that God made us in the first place different from anything else in creation, in that he created us in his own image and likeness. Now that covers a range of characteristics, including personality and all that that involves, moral consciousness, the ability to determine to some degree between right and wrong, and moral character, in other words, being morally like God in terms of holiness and godliness and truth and so on. Now, we said then that this image was damaged and distorted by Adam's sin. Paul puts it like this, sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. And if you want a, a very simple test of this, if you're a parent, just ask yourself if you have to teach your children what is right or what is wrong. It's usually what is right because they seem to know what is wrong instinctively. That is now embedded in our old human nature. Jesus wasn't just made in the image of God, he is the image of God, in that he shares the divine nature as well as his character. And we are to be remade like him, as Paul tells us, like God in true righteousness and holiness. So God's ultimate whole goal for, for you and me in this life is not comfort or success or, or personal fulfillment, or, but character development. Because in so doing, he is preparing us so that we might, among other things, feel completely at home when we get to heaven. Now, how does this happen? Let's look at our first section today. I've entitled it, God's Spirit Working in You. Because that is a fundamental truth. It's absolutely essential that we get hold of it. And this is that the Holy Spirit's job is to produce this Christ-like character in us. And this is nothing that we can do ourselves. As it says in 2 Corinthians, we are being transformed into God's likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. As we say, it's all of grace. It's all God's doing. But to that end, he uses what traditionally we call the means of grace. God's Word, for example, which was inspired by the Holy Spirit, either by personal Bible study or through teaching, through which he makes his will made known to us. And then again, prayer, when the Spirit puts us in direct contact with the Lord, who, through this medium, often speaks to us as much as we speak to him. And then his people, to provide support and encouragement. We were looking at this last time, weren't we? The fact that we are saved together and not just as individuals. There's a lovely word in the New Testament, koinonia. It means fellowship, based on the idea of sharing. What is it that we're sharing? It's the sharing of the Holy Spirit, the fellowship of the Spirit. Christian maturity is not a solitary individual pursuit. And then fourthly, being sovereign, he overrules and creates circumstances which provide the environment we need to practice Christ-likeness. And in these ways, God begins to implant in us new desires and longings, a new appetite for the things of God, a new understanding of the things of God, new aims, new ambitions, a whole new value system. So Paul could say, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. However, this isn't an instantaneous experience. Spiritual maturity is the result of a long, slow process of growth. At least that is the ideal. Being imperfect creatures, that process will only be completed, of course, when Jesus Christ returns. John tells his readers, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known, probably because we, as we are, don't have the capacity to understand it. But he continues, we know that when he appears, that is when Christ returns, 
we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Our progress in this way is described, pictured, in terms of organic growth and fruitfulness. In Galatians 5, we have a very well-known picture, the fruit of the Spirit. In other words, what the Holy Spirit aims to produce in us. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And that kind of growth doesn't happen overnight. As Warren says, sadly, many popular Christian books have replaced this goal with personal fulfillment, with feeling great about yourself or living a successful life. But remember how we started a couple of weeks ago? In the beginning, God. What we're going to look at in our second session is how does God do it? <laughs>